Okay, so you clicked on today's video because you're asking yourself the question, why should I storyboard? I've asked myself this question before because I thought storyboarding wasn't that important. While it doesn't seem important at first, storyboarding shows whoever you're working with your vision that's inside your head. This is very important because you have a vision you're trying to portray, but explaining it with words isn't enough. If you have it on paper, people can visualize what you're talking about and actually grasp the concept. It's a great way to help other people understand what you want portrayed. So when I use storyboards, I usually stick with the same two templates. These are 3x3 three three templates, and I usually like to have some space to write below each of the scenes. And if anybody is interested in using these storyboard templates themselves, the link will be in the description below. Now there's a ton of different storyboards though, you don't have to use the two I use. There's tons with only three frames, there's some with multiple like 20 frames. There's many different storyboards and you can just Google storyboard templates and you'll get a ton of options. When it comes to storyboarding for myself, there's three different type of projects I storyboard for. The first and most important to myself is paid work. This is when somebody's paying me to create a video for them. For example, if I meet with a company and they want me to make a video for them, I create a storyboard outlining what I plan and the story I envision for their product or their company or whatever the video is about. And I think it's the most important to storyboard when you're getting paid for work because this is where the client actually gets to see what you're envisioning. This is where they can decide early on if they like your idea or if they don't. Because if they don't like your storyboard, they're most likely not going to like it in the final product. That's why I'd suggest anybody who doesn't storyboard for their paid work right now, I'd suggest you do it now just to save you that time and effort. Okay, now the second time I'd storyboard is for film work. Film work is when you're working on a movie, a short film, basically any sort of film project where you're working with a cast and crew. When it comes to film work, almost every big budget movie has a storyboard. Because if you created the story yourself and you want to make the film, it's very important to get it on paper what you're envisioning so other people can picture your film. Basically by drawing and writing descriptions of what's happening scene by scene, you're showing your cast and crew what you want the movie to look like and you give them an idea what the story is actually about. Now this doesn't mean that your storyboard has to be elaborate and complex, but it's mainly about letting your cast and crew visualize what they're creating. And while it may be hard to draw out every single scene, it doesn't matter about the detail, it matters about the rough outline that they have something to work off of. You can explain with your words and expand upon the storyboard, but it's important to show them something in paper so they can actually visualize your movie. The last project I sometimes storyboard for is personal work. That's like YouTube videos like this one here. Now I usually don't actually storyboard when it comes to YouTube videos, but for example, today's YouTube video I storyboarded for, and I have the storyboard right here with me, so I can go by it step by step. Basically, if you make a storyboard for your YouTube video, this is a great way to get more organized and make your videos quicker. Now I say this because if you make a storyboard, you know the B-roll shots you need to get, you know the talking to the camera shots like this you need to get, and you can determine how you need to cut it together. Okay, so when it comes to actually making the storyboard, I go very bare bones. I usually do stick figures, I don't do a ton of detail. It's basically so I can see the outline for what I'm envisioning. When working for a client or for a film, it's more important to get detail, but it's really just about getting a rough draft of what you're envisioning for your project. So take a little bit more time on your storyboards when you're making them for clients or for a film. And that's basically all you need to know when it comes to storyboarding. So if you don't already storyboard, I think you should start now. You don't have to do it on every project, but I think it's a great way to keep yourself organized, and it's a great way to show others what you have envisioned for your project or their project. And if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe because I make weekly videos on filmmaking and photography. And I'll see you guys next week.